You're listening to New HD New York, where rock lives. I am Patrick Bamburek, and this is Patrick Bamburek's Night Music. I'm very excited to have with me today a recording artist I greatly admire. Uh, and I'm very happy to say um, that I've had many opportunities and will continue to have opportunities to work with. I'm talking about Raina Williams. So uh, welcome to Patrick Van Burek's Night Music on New HD New York. We're rock Yeah. Lives. Thanks for having me, Patrick. It's an honor, pleasure, long overdue, man. That's what's up. And we have the advantage, right, of having uh, all the opportunities we've had to work together. Um, and for me, as a recording artist, too, to get to know your music, um, and to get to know your skill um, as a songwriter, as an engineer, as a musician, as a singer, um, you're the total package. Uh, and that's one of the things I think that will come out in the discussion today, um, just how well-rounded uh, in the complete picture of an artist that you are. Let's start with, with that. Where is Raina Williams from? Uh, okay. And uh, how did you how did you discover your talent and passion for music? So let's start start right at the beginning. So um, I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, born and raised. Um, and my passion for music, honestly, probably started before I was born. Like my mom um, trained and sang opera for most of my young life until young adulthood. Like only recently since COVID, she's actually just not been, you know, she wasn't doing any singing jobs, you know, because she was still working in churches, you know, but she sang Washington Opera, Baltimore Opera, you know, she's done, you know, she's got to um, perform, I guess there was a time when Pavarotti was like the guy at the Washington, at the Met, you know, so she's, she's done some things and, um, you know, I guess that's the, where it kind of started is being in the house, like, and, and my mom and dad, when they met, they were actually in a band together, like, this is way before I existed, but, you know, yep. so it's, music's always been, like, in my life, you know what I mean, kind of, like, um, part of, part of who I am, so, I mean, you know, it could have been something that I was like, oh, I don't want to do that, I don't want to do this, but it just, you know, it's just always felt right, and I, and I think in music, like, the way my mind works, if, you know, windshield wipers are going, I start making a beat. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. It's oh, like okay. that, that type of thing. So, um, yeah, that's, that's basically like how it started. You know, Baltimore is like, a, it's an interesting town, um, but there's a lot of art there and there's a lot of music there. Um, you know, they have Billie Holiday. Like I got a street named after Billie Holiday. She was uh, very present in the scene. And it's one of those places where you got the school for the arts, Baltimore school for the arts is there. And, um, Peabody Institute, which is like all art based places that even Tupac went to Baltimore School for the Arts. So it's one of those things where it's like, I feel like it was kind of a natural thing. And, um, you know, growing up, there was never growing up in Baltimore, there was never like a lack of like inspiration to to write. It usually was like some some weird stuff. But at the same time, you know, it's like, I never, I never like deny that I'm from there, even though there's a lot of things about Baltimore that I'm not like proud of as, as a place, but, um, is a city for art. Like it's very, it's a very artsy town. So, you know, for all of your fans who know your music and know the genres that, you know, and you've worked in many genres of music, but to hear, you know, the first style of music that, uh, is, is at the beginning of your story is opera. Um, mm -hmm. And that you are, as you said, you know, a person who thinks in music. Mm -hmm. So that sense of of the sort of the purity of music, I guess, that's sort of inside your mind, inside your soul. Um, do you feel like you're an artist who, uh, you know, sort of transcends genres? To to you, does it all boil down to being just music? Yeah, for sure. I always I always um say like the opera, I guess, background of like opera slash like, you know. I, when I say church music, a lot of people think of like um, gospel. Uh, I think, I don't know, maybe that's just me making assumptions, but like it was more of like the traditional hymnals. And so there was like, mm -hmm. when, when I would, the thing that would really catch my ear as a kid is like the harmony breakdowns. Like we would be, I would go to rehearsals with my mom. And then, so I'd be in the, you know, and it was usually at, like a church building like Baltimore Opera before they had built a facility where they actually had rehearsals, they would 
have a one this one specific church. It was one or two of the churches that they would have their rehearsals at, and they would have like a Sunday school room. And that's where I used to hang out and like color book coloring books and like markers and stuff. But I could hear because I was like right down the hall, you know. And mm-hmm. this was back when I, you know, my homework was minimal, so my homework was done in twenty minutes. And then I'm sitting there and they're having the rehearsal, and then I'm hearing like the choir director like say, "Okay, sopranos," and then he sings that note, and it's like, "Okay, baritone, sing this," and they were like it was like picking the harmonies apart and then you hear it together and my little mind was like oh wow yeah. you know and the same thing like in church like i would always my mom showed me what the desk cant was like you know in the hymn books there's like the the melody and they have like the the notes and the words and, and then there's this other line like at the bottom and that was like basically like a harmony that you would sing along with the melody and so like I was very minimally skilled at reading music but enough so where I could figure out what the descant was and then the places where like I I was like oh I don't really know what the tone of that note is my brain would fill it in um so like I, I feel like I I like as far as the question about like being a musician all around like genre and stuff like I I have a hard time just kind of like sticking to doing one thing because I just love music and there's so much music that out there that's dope and like so many different genres that are so cool. And I think that for me, it's just whatever feels good or like feels right. And like, again, like in my mind, like how it comes out and like this beat, you know, and when I was in um, high school, I, I, I was in like the percussion ensemble. I was the only young lady in a percussion ensemble with a bunch of uh, these boys and they banging on drums and stuff. But I would hear them when I first, when I first went to high school in ninth grade, I'm like, yo, that's, that's kind of dope. And like, I, I remember when I was in middle school that the high school kids had come to our school and like playing their drums and doing these cool things that I wanted to do that. And so that's another like piece of it. Um, I, I know we're going to talk about the band a little later, but I don't know if you notice, like in, in, when we're in practice, I talk to Derek in drum. Like I, I, yes. I tell him what I want to hear because like, I am very much as much as like a songwriter. And he's, I also like, if I had a drum kit, I think I like, I told my wife, I was like, when we're buying a house, I'm getting a kit and I'm, I'm going to be playing mm-hmm. that thing. Cause it's just like making beats and like, you know what I'm saying? Like a very like a percussive, like very like, beat oriented like that groove like that undertone and then you lay like your melodies and your chords on top or your chords and your melodies and then you lyrics that's how i usually build a song i mean there's no rules to this but you know like right. i just i don't like to stick to one genre but i know that it's th- for strategic purposes you have to kind of like whittle it down so people are like well what kind of music do you make and i used to be like i whatever i want <laughs> you know <laughs> and it's kind of do right. it but it has definitely like kind of gone into this like reggae hip hop mode it's always been I feel like it's always kind of been like this like hip hop thing like I had a a guitar I got a guitar the guitar I still play this guitar right 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 there it mirrors things weird is um I got that when I was 13 my 13th birthday I've had that since I was 13 and it's got like right. all the memories and all the things and like you know, I, I got good. I used to buy Guitar World magazines, but only if they had songs in it that I wanted to learn. <laughs> and, yeah. then, and I was like how, that. And then just kind of going from there. So I did start out like alternative. Like I used to listen to a lot of Metallica, like Alice in Chains. Like that's kind of when, you know, the, the creative started bubbling and I had an outlet to like do it, you know. And then and then I think my mom's um, at the time is this uh, guy that she was seeing for a long time, his son had moved in with us and he, he was more into like hip hop and R and B. So that's kind of when I really got introduced to it. So that was like the early nineties, you know, like 93, the 96, but it was more like that mainstream thing. So, you know, it's weird. Like the influences that I have as far as like hearing like people rhyme and rap and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, like part of my story is really like weird and kind of kind of kind of messed up in a way, but at the same time, it's cool because I'm here and I just do what I do. And I, you know, my my wife's like, you need to give yourself more credit. So that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's an interesting foundation too that you have when you're talking about um, your mother as an opera singer doing essentially what is uh, you know sacred music as the foundation for Western classical music. I mean, that's mm-hmm. really um, you know where the roots of classical go back to. 
And um, when you're sitting down the hall from with the rehearsal and you're hearing all of this music coming from, you know, I'm sure the incredible acoustics of the big room in the church in Baltimore um, and hearing it being broken down and getting the pieces of music and, and uh, understanding how they um, exist separately and then how they're woven together. Did that start to like program your mind too um, when you were approaching uh, the uh, art of recording your music? 100%. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Like this, sometimes I have to not do harmonies. <laughs> like, it's, like, I, it was, it's funny because when I, when I first started, like I, when I had the access to like get to, to record, you know, recipes with Grandma Margie Williams, she you know, help me get like my first piece of gear. I actually still have it. It's over here. It's busted. It's an 828 old Motu 828. I don't even know why I still have it. I think it's just one of those things. Like it looks cool sitting in the rack. It doesn't freaking work. Right. But like, right. you know, that was the first thing that I ever had to like record on. And I, you know, went out and got a mic and like I had to, com I did a whole thing in the inbox and the computer and like do all of that. And I, I don't even remember what the first program was. I think somebody gave me a copy of like Digital Performer or something like that. As I went to school, I ended up going to school for like recording, like after high school. Like I, I just caught the bug at that point. I was like, you know, I had been in a band, like I had been in the studio, did demos, you know, like that. So I was like, I'm gonna do it at home because, you know, sometimes I could, I, I could be kind of cheap. So I was like, I want to learn how to do it myself. Blah, 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 blah. You know, so, and, but, but right. that when I started recording myself and being like, oh, I have kind of an infinite number of tracks, that, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. And so it's just like, you know, I would lay like the, the, the one line because sometimes I'll spend like 30 minutes to just working out like parts. Like I'll sit in here and I'll, there'll be like the main line, even, even on my raps. You know what I mean? Where there's like just going in and out with like some harmony, like what do they ad libs? You know, like it's, you know, just the emphasis. Um, but I remember when I first started making demos and stuff, and like this, you know, people always say stuff to you when you when you're coming up, and it, it's like constructive criticism. But I've learned in my in my maturity to to not take things personally. But I used to be like, yo, what this guy is like, oh. You you put all those harmonies on there. It kind of brings out the cheese, and I'm like, the cheese? Are you kidding? And like, you know, I think back to it. I'm like, it probably was maybe cheesy, but you also talking. I was talking to a guy that raps and he didn't sing, so you know, it's also like not. But a lot of times, there's been many times being a woman in this industry where men have asked me, "Oh, did you do this yourself?" Like, you don't right, ask these right. other boys that. You know, you oh, did you do this all by yourself? Like, yes, sir, I did. So, you know, right. and, and and so it's one of those things where, you know, there's this, and I think that has also played a little bit in this kind of like self doubt or like this downplaying thing that I that I fight with every day, where it's like mm -hmm. being made to feel like it's not good enough because I've. I, that was like a experience that I had a lot like and again learning what is a constructive criticism and what to take and then what to just leave you know not assuming either way but saying okay well this person might be a little bit biased or like this person like there was you know I've had so many experiences like back in the MySpace days like I reached out to this producer who I found, who I stumbled upon and he was accessible and I was like oh wow this guy he's like a producer so I reached out to him and I was like hey I really like your music and like you know come check out my beats and then you know he just kind of like bashed me you know and it, and it doesn't but that you know that energy really doesn't serve anybody like even if I was starting out which I was like the last thing that you should do to somebody is like put them down instead of like say hey you know that that's that's good like or are you on the right track or like keep going like even if it's not the greatest thing which it probably wasn't at the time I heard some old stuff I did all like that's terrible <laughs> you know or like that's right. it's good but there's like that's what growth is like you know what I'm saying yeah. nobody really like pops out unless you're Jacob Collier you don't pop out like being excellent <laughs> right away but i'm sure he was like terrible for like six months the first six months of his life until he was able to speak and then he was just amazing 
<laughs> well, you know, there's a um, there's a Lou Reed album, and uh, the title of the record is "Growing Up in Public," and that's what we as recording artists do, you know. And you got to get your mind around the fact that you're going to release and put stuff out there forever that is still like sort of the earliest phases of your growth, and and um, unless you do it and release things, you'll never put anything out. So you got to mm -hmm. start somewhere and then that body of work will grow and evolve and change over time. Um, and for you, uh, one of the things that has always impressed me from the moment we met um, is how committed, how all in to your, um, to your growth as an artist you are, that no matter what you've accomplished, you're always just as hungry to do the next thing um, as you were when you began, uh, you know, my sense is, is that, you know, um, we, as musicians, we, we will encounter each other and stuff. And then all of a sudden you measure up like, okay, you know, how really committed to the art and craft is that other person? Do you want to work with them? And, and in your case, it's like, you're a thousand and 10% committed, um, to your growth, uh, with these amazing accomplishments. What are some of the milestones that you um, would point to in your career as things that you can't believe you did, um, and they're in your you're in your in your resume forever. Oh man, I mean, if we we're gonna go backwards from the present moment, um, I can't believe that I had a song that, like this song that I have, unlock it. You know, for me not promoting it it's it gets like 5000 something streams a month and that's slowed down a bit um you know and that's a with help from um uh, a label like a small label high vibe records and they you know they do like singles you know so i'm not signed to them i'm not their artist but i have music that they have released and um you know it's on one of the one of the playlists that they're associated with and then getting added to other people's playlists so that's super dope like seeing that i'm I don't know, I think clocking probably 200,000 something plus streams now. And I'm that's that's literally the, you know, I've made a couple of videos with it a few, a few times. And then just like having a bunch of stuff placed in TV shows, like yeah. a girl, that, you know, being able to work with amazing musicians. Like I, um, when I was maybe about 10 years ago, there was this um, music festival in Michigan. Um, it's Michigan Women's Music Festival. And like, I think the second, first or second year of that, which I think the last one, they, they, they 30 years, like they, or 35 years that, you know, Mishfest uh, was around, but like the first or second year they had Tracy Chapman right before she blew up. Oh, wow. And like, so there was like these, you know, that, that stage and like those artists and like, um, you know, one of the more, um, seasoned and, um, well versed artists on there, um, that, that came from that community, um, Toshi Regan, she's like this, her mother was this huge like activist, um, Bernice Johnson Regan, who she actually just passed away. But like, you know, she definitely like, I mean, Toshi's like performed for Obama and like all these, you know, presidents and Kennedy Center and stuff like that. But I got to share the stage with Gantland Dorsey, who was um, David Bowie's oh, bass yeah. player. And you yes. know what I mean? Doing that festival and, and um, you know, and just really dope women um ally miller who like plays drums for um what's her name um ten thousand maniacs of what's this oh, natalie merchant yeah, yeah like she you know what i'm saying like you we're in yeah. a store and like work you know and i'm hearing you know these songs and i'm like that's ally miller playing drums and like and i've performed yes. with ally miller and ally miller like loves my music like it's still you know that type of thing like being able to share the stage with like these and vicky randall like vicky randall was on the tonight show band forever you know what i mean right. um with jay leno you know and she's she's real cool and like you know just really dope like and i think that was the one thing about you know being at Mishfest, like being around like these really sick women, women musicians, you know, there was another um woman at um Alex, she performed. There was when um, I think Mary Vieira had like a daytime show, and I'm like, is that Alex? Okay. It's like shredding, like just you know, again, just like these really like dope women, and um, and just like hearing my stuff, like you know, I'm I'm sitting in the living room, and then like a show is playing on Netflix, and I'm like, that's me like in the background on the, in the song mm -hmm. like oh, i remember that like that song sounds familiar like people hit me up and then and then of course like i was um maybe i don't know in 2000 
11 or whenever they did, I was on the X Factor, like the one season that they had in America. I don't know. Maybe they had two seasons. I don't know. It was like the first season. That was a crazy experience. Like I was just talking to somebody last week about like how weird and crazy and cool and traumatizing and you know, a setup and like all of the, all of those things, yeah. like those, those TV talent shows, you know, they are not what they seem to be, but at the same time, it's like, who, who doesn't want that type of like exposure, quote unquote, like, you know, at right. the end of the day, like it, it, it helped to inspire like a different part of me, like a growth in me, because, you know, thinking it back, thinking back on like how kind of like, pompous I came off or like kind of arrogant because I felt like I had to be because I was like mm -hmm. on TV and there was a contest and like you know all about your personality you know and so it's like like you were saying before like the growth and stuff and like me still wanting mm -hmm. to do this like there's many times where I, where I was like I don't even know why I'm doing this like why am I trying like there's so many you know and then but then I'm like cuz I can't stop you know, and so instead of me worrying about what other people are doing or comparing myself to other artists or whatever, like I, I have to turn that into like, all right, well, this is really inspiring. Like this person is doing this. This person can do this. Like one person I feel that way about is Brittany Howard, man. Like she, you know, when I see her and like I hear her and like her voice is so different. Right. And she's not like your typical look, but like she, you know, Alabama shakes like my wife took me to go see them. Uh, some years ago for my birthday in Philly and like they were so good and I only knew like a couple of their songs but I really liked them and I really liked her and like just to see how like she's just so unabashedly like authentic and like she goes out there and she does her thing like that inspires me every time she pops off my feet I'm like I gotta just keep rocking because Brittany Howard out here doing this like you know and she's doesn't care what people think about her and she doesn't that's not the focus and like you could tell when people really do this because they love it versus they do it because they want to be rich and famous you know it's a right. different vibe and i definitely i like i would like to be rich i don't care about being famous but i feel rich already in my life look i'm in my own studio i'm like look here i'm got a wife i got naked cats like you know i get royalty <laughs> checks like i'm doing yeah. i'm doing more than like most of the people that's in our industry that are trying to do things you know, I, I have feel very fortunate to like still have relationships with people in publishing companies and like people this guy just hit me up today, like, oh, when you want to do the session, and that's you know different for me. Like I usually have people send me a track, but he wants to like do a session, like probably over Zoom. And I'm like, all right, well, we can figure it out. You know, so it that's cool. The work itself is the reward. Um, but uh it's also just like you're sometimes you're so working so hard you're you're not even seeing kind of the bigger picture of what you've accomplished you know and one of the things that struck me when we first met was that as i discovered your music and and we were talking about you know the things we were into what we've done who we worked with like our worlds were connected that six degrees of separation right um whether it was you know other musicians in new jersey or people in the top levels of the music industry um to me immediately that was the sign that um you know you you are really deep into this um into this world and accomplishing things that uh, you know, for there, there's people who uh, on their best day are dreaming that they can have, you know, a tenth of what you've already accomplished. You know, how do you uh, continue to inspire yourself? How do you um, work to uh, sort of push aside that doubt so that you can uh, keep doing the brilliant things you're doing? Oh, well, it's just like this morning before we had a session, like I, I meditated and I remember that when I was doing regular meditation every day, that definitely helped me like stay more focused and get out of my head. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it, I do this meditation that I, that I found from um, the dude Sadhguru and it's called um, Isha Kriya. And like, he just says, I am not the body. I am not even the mind, you know, and that's, and, and it lasts for maybe about eight or 10 minutes. And then there's like, it's other part, but like, Sometimes when I don't have the headphones to, to, to pull up the YouTube video to listen, because it's kind of a guided meditation in a way, but I could st I'd still do it um, on my own. And it really helps. And there's definitely been some moments where I've reached the, the level, like when you meditate, your brain waves um, change. 
And mm-hmm. I, I definitely like have reached, gotten to the point um, where there's been quite a few times where I sit down to meditate and I definitely am like, feel like my consciousness is here, like almost outside of my body. Um, and then I just kind of the thought, I don't focus on a thought. Like some people are like, oh, what am I like thoughts? Like I have this, this. It's not about emptying your mind, but it's not about attaching yourself to any of the thoughts that you have. And so like, if you practice doing that enough and then you're in your waking life or you, know, you, you are awake, but like, you know, when you walk, just walking around, mm-hmm. I found that like, it was easier for me to detach from weird intrusive thoughts or like doubts about myself. And so, you know, and I was talking to you about, about this the other day. Like I used to, I used to smoke cannabis for like a long time. And like, I didn't know that like, there was a whole nother part of me, a whole nother way, a whole nother version of Raina Williams. That's like a more productive focused version. And people are like, well, how would you not know that? Cause I smoked since I was a teenager and then like, for most of my life. So then like, there was this different side of me that came out when I started not engaging in smoking cannabis and now like i'm just like what am i like because then i would and then i would stop and then i would go back and then i would notice that there was like this change and like my focus and my drive and my self-doubt and because then when i get out of it i'm like what do you mean like why are you you know so it's it's sort of like for me i'm this is a disclaimer for all of you don't smoke pot guys like but for me personally like it doesn't it, it served its purpose for, I guess, when it did. And now in my life, I'm like, no, nah, that's it. Cause it's, it just blocks me. Like it, it does things and it changes the way that I feel about myself. And it's not a real, those aren't feelings aren't valid. So, you know, that's kind of how I, you know, the really, you know, um, like Wuta way, like esoteric, like that's the way for me personally, that's how I keep moving because when I'm when I step back and listen to things that I've done and listen to things and see how people respond every still when when I go out and do shows like that also keeps me going like you know right. of course I'm gonna get in the room and be like oh I don't like I, I can't play guitar like you like you're you're an amazing guitar player like I can't play guitar like you know like Mike but that doesn't matter right like you know, I do music the way that I do it and I show up the way that I show up and the way that I hear things is unique. Like there's nobody in this world that's like you. There's nobody in this world that's like me. That's the beauty of individuality. And so it's like, that's really like how I kind of stay motivated and understanding there's like nobody out there like me, dog, like nobody. And so like, it's almost this kind of, there's a little bit of ego there. Like, yo, I got to share this with the world. Like, cause I'm a unique right. person and I, I feel happy to share the things, the, the gifts that I've been blessed with that comes from the universe. Like it comes from creator. Like I'm not a religious person by any means, but I, I feel like I understand, you know, the, I understand the matrix <laughs> like there's this right. you know there, there's this this force that like this unseen thing that's like holding everything together and when you step back that's another thing with meditation you get quiet and like you know I've said with ayahuasca before and like everybody says it it it's definitely has that effect where like oh no this isn't this isn't all there is like and it's not about heaven or hell or anything like that it's just more like this is a dimension that we exist in and there's other dimensions they even have CIA documents to just prove that like they they've been holding on to this thing for years like they they already knew about it and it was, how did they right. get their meditation like you can access the fabric of the universe so that's 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 really why it's like you know all of the, the doubts and stuff that's all like noise and so I just have to try to like push the noise away <laughs> and just stay stay that, focused on like the good the good stuff we doing that mindset is a driver in my opinion too behind why your lyrics are so inspiring and motivating and meaningful um you know when i uh was listening to your your songs and i was um you know all the ones that were just new to my ears and stuff and Mm -hmm. i was like really blown away by the insight by the positivity by the meaning by the the weight of the message that you're delivering um as a songwriter myself too uh, I, you know i i always would strive to say something whether i was writing a deep song for me or i was writing maybe something a little lighter for another artist but stick a message in there somewhere um yours are uh 
they're beautifully crafted, accessible, uh, but yet so meaningful. And so as a lyricist, um, how does your meditation mindset help you with your uh, craft of, of writing lyrics? I have to make myself not write something that means something. Like my default is I'm creating. Like if you were, if you were creator, like I literally say like, those meaningless bugs that exist, they still have a purpose. Like mosquitoes, as much as I can't stand mosquitoes, like they have a purpose on the in the ecosystem. They're food for other bugs that do other things that, you know what I'm saying? So it's like oh, when yeah. I, even when I write a, write something like right now, I'm working on this thing with this um producer from the UK and it's like, this this track that's like very um superhero like video game like you know movie trailer dramatic like hip hop it's so sick like it's sick, a sick track like i heard it and i was like ee! you know just cuz that's the, the reaction i get when i hear something that's so nice and and like but i'm writing like these lyrics like something about like in like a lion out like a legend so i'm gonna come back with the vengeance like you know so and that's how is that me no but it's like i have to become this character like when i write right. these songs but still making it like like i remember one time i was working with a different uk producer and i was just saying right now like yeah it's gonna be the greatest verse ever and it's gonna be so clever and he was like yo you're so dope he was like but this is for like tv placement like we gotta he's like you're doing too much <laughs> and i was just like but i <laughs> you know and just having to learn how to do that so like when, when i'm writing for me it's definitely stream of consciousness it's definitely like you know how does it how do these chords feel or like what is this like a lot of times ever since i had stopped smoking like i've been getting like dream dreams of like songs and one time i had a dream that we were all like at rehearsal and derek was like hey tati you remember that song that you did and he pulled up some youtube and it was like some video it of like one of my songs that was like in like a fast and furious movie which has never happened right but in this in this dimension that i was tapping into this reality where derek's like remember this song and then i'm mm -hmm. just like and i and in the in the dream like it was familiar and i never forgot it and i got up in the middle of the night walked in here i was like i don't have i can't record so i just got my phone and i turned the video feature on because it gets audio and so there's this black screen but I, I was picking the guitar up and i was playing it in the dark and so like oh, wow. that's a song that eventually <laughs> we're gonna play but it's just the hook and the, like the beat and the chords and i figured right at that moment because i couldn't forget it and it was very simple but like that simple hook that i came up with is a bed for something again that's coming from my heart that I feel like I that it needs to be shared with people because there's a lot of you know because because there, there's a lot of like protest music and like you know it's like if you're conscious right and then there's you know there's different phases of it like oh fight the power or oh it is like I think that the the part of what what I bring to whoever is willing to listen is like someone used to say that it was listening to my music was like reading a diary um but like this diary of like self-growth and like self-awareness and like personal responsibility and like and i just want people to know that they're not alone in like feeling these certain ways about themselves and about life and like it's okay to like be flawed but recognize those things and then learn and grow from them because there's a lot of this like lack of accountability juice that people are on right now when they don't really right. want to like look at it but it really just comes from shame you know what i mean and like it comes from being ashamed of like maybe not being what you think you should be or acting a way that is acceptable so then there's people wear these masks and they pretend and they do all these things you know and and that's i guess it's okay but there's a there's a time for like growing out of that you know and everybody's a work in progress i am not a perfect person but i'm definitely not the same human being that i was 20 years ago you know and i right. could and i could just tell by the way that i listen to songs that i wrote 20 years ago versus now it, it always had meaning it was just different you know and i always try to make it 
I'm kind of like an overachiever. So I, I always try to make like my songs be excellent, you know, and part of that comes from like working in the publishing business and like having this guy be like, I need the most, this, 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 and that's like the pressure, you know? So I, I try not to, you know, I have to give the time to like, you know, where I work with people who don't exactly always make me feel pressure anymore. You know, they just come, they, they're like, yo, well, we work with you because we love what you do. So like just knowing that and being like, all right, so that's already, it's not even like, oh, you set the bar high. Like I'm the bar. Like they're coming to me because I'm the bar that they, that they want at that moment. Right. So that's kind of how I, how it comes out. If that makes sense. Like, yeah. oh, you know, absolutely. <laughs> sometimes I even write, um, you know, if it's like a subject matter thing, it's really like helpful. And I, I'll just be like, all right, well, I got to write this song about like, you know, it's, it's got this heist feel. It's usually like, like for publishers. I'm like, oh, it feels like a heist. It feels like somebody's robbing somebody or whatever. So I start writing out all of the words like associated with that. And then I'm like, all right, I'm going to throw that. And the rhyme, what is it? The rhyme dictionary.com. Oh, I, if I could <laughs> put money and invest in that website, I would. Because that's the website is my best friend. Oh, yeah. that's the site is great. <laughs> it it cuts time in half because your girl can't always think of all the clever words. <laughs> uh, well, you're good at finding them if you can't think yeah. of them because they're brilliant. Oh. <laughs> People oftentimes they ask me, they're like, you know, how do you do what you do? And I'm like, well, it's a, it's also a job. It's a craft. You you need to have the right tool for the right job at the right time, you know, and the right mindset to solve the problem that's ahead of you. Um, whether you're writing yeah. a song for another artist, for television or for yourself, that if you can't um, get, if your ego gets in the way of doing what you need to do for the work that's at hand, um, you're going to be just hitting your head against a brick wall all the time. Yeah, for sure. The ego is like, <laughs> like a little baby child. Go, go sit down. Like, so, oh, yeah, you could come out. Okay, something like that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to celebrate that. Okay, now have a seat because you're going to get me in trouble. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so we've established so far that um you know the your foundations in music um through you know your experience with your mother that world you inhabited um how this has been part of your life since as long as you can remember and and it's brought you to um to television to arenas to stages large and small uh, making records to writing for other artists to developing your own career um all of this journey is led now to this moment where you and i are talking um yeah. and what is happening now in the world of Raina williams well i was just thinking about how it was cool like this year i got to go to maui um with this dance company that is um headed up by my cousin um mm -hmm. Brian Johnson who is like he just got awarded a Google and Guggenheim like fellowship award which is huge like that's like a wow. huge thing like you know there's a lot of other really like prolific amazing um you know black and brown people that that have received that award so he's like you know amongst your your upper echelon of like you right. know as far as in the dance world you know so like that in and of itself is cool. Like, you know, just being able to have like these things that I, that I do, that's not exactly like my stuff, but I'm bringing my flavor. Like I produced um, three or four tracks for Soul Defined. That's the name of the dance company, Soul Defined. Um, we got to perform in Maui. We've performed in, um, in Washington, DC. We did um, in New York city. Like I traveled in the past couple of years, like I've traveled around with them a lot which is beautiful because i get to do my thing in a different way you know what i'm saying i get to like do some finger drumming he kind of pushes me he's been very integral in the past couple of years for like kind of pushing me to that to be to being like more confident about like the producing side and like you know um and it is it's cool to like sometimes like be a support instead of like be like the main event um but as far as right. like Raina williams main event like you know we got this band going Raina Williams in the remedy which is so dope like and I'm so happy to be able to work with you and you know Wayne Lyle who's like this bass player from like another planet you know and, yes. and you know helping to like really like this you know Derek who's just such this young 
like amazing drummer and like seeing him grow. Like I worked with him a couple of years ago when I first started trying to get, get a band together and like seeing the growth from the, from two years to now. Yeah. And then just like, you know, how hungry he is just to learn stuff stuff and like to get better and like play different styles and then you know mike who who's like just a really cool chill like he's just a guitar head and like i learned so much yeah. about like different music from him because I, I don't listen to bluegrass or fish or grateful dead and nothing like that but just that type of different way and like you know and somebody like pedro who like i realized it's just like he's he's just hungry to play music and like yes even if and even in like, but he's somebody that like, I could give you a chart, my guy, and you could just play that. Like, I don't right. even have, to, you know what I mean? And so it's like some of the things where, where we're, we're doing this, this collabing and like kind of bringing together and like, you know, songs that I've had for years. And now we're, we're like, kind of like breathing new life into them. Like, it feels like all of the things that I've been doing over the past 20 mm, how long has it been oh jesus i'm telling my age the 20 something years of my life with the you know from starting out being in a band in a you know somebody's basement you know playing tool <laughs> and then now we're like right here playing you know original songs and you know progressing at this cool pace and like just having everybody really just be on on board like and that's why you know i'm i'm not really even though i'm like mm, could we could we use like a keyboard player yeah could we use like a you know extra horn or whatever yeah but like right now i'm really just feeling like our vibe and i would rather uh, us like nurture that and then the people that are meant to join us because it's again i'm very big on like people's energy and like you know what's your vibe like and that's why you know the, the write the way that i write and like it's, it's like a little family, you know, and so I just want us to be able to nurture that with each other and continue to, you know, we are we almost there with having like a full set, you know, so by the time we have, you know, our gig, you know, we have a gig coming up October 1st and then, you know, we're also playing in um, at the at an Adams Fest. So by the time we get there, we're going to have the sets and then we're going to tell you to grow to build and grow from it. Like I have so many visions for like what we're going to do and where in the places that I want to to be on the stages and I feel like I don't know how but it's going to happen like I, you yeah. know you can't really worry about the how right like I've learned that in life too like a lot of times the things that we want don't happen when we want them to or but how they happen is a lot more amazing like you can make things happen of course like you put the work in you do that you know and and again like that is the band and then i'm just been doing a lot more collaborating with different producers for you know more like publishing things um i'm doing this um track right now I actually have to send it to them today these these two really amazing um vocalists this one woman audrey callahan she 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 calls her um high high vibe pop inner high vibe entertainment i n n e r like i love that playing with words but she's wow. like positive and she had this um and the other one um this woman named sophia i can't remember her last name forgive me sophia but like she she kind of stumbled on a sophia but i worked with audrey last year we did this little like um like a re a redo of this um some pretty girls walk like this uh, this but we did like um pretty girls think like this and then it was very more inspiring and she's got she's audrey's gotten like quite a a beautiful like following and she's got a patreon page her name's audrey callahan and she actually did a song with this guy um michael wilbur who was in this band called moon hooch and there was they're like this moon hooch was like horns and like beats like almost like if you if you were like an edm dj but the people was playing horns too and oh, wow. like yeah and then michael started building like these cones like for the end of his sax like like almost like the street cones like using the, the construction cones to like amplify with the sound and then I, he kind of started doing his own thing and then he made this song he made this track and she wrote to it and then i'm like watching the u.s open like flipping through and i'm like is that audrey and like so she and michael got a placement on um on a 
you know, U.S. Open. They, they used it. That was their theme, the theme for the U.S. Open this past. Oh, wow. this <laughs> yeah. 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 So, it, you know, Audrey, Audrey's cool. She's got a great voice. And so I'm, I'm doing a track with her and, uh, and Sophia, um, you know, just kind of building something. And, you know, I might jump on there with a rap or whatever, but I'm, I'm literally just trying to, you know, ha have them give them something that they could they could sing their their beautiful inspiring lyrics over because we we need more of that you know what I'm saying we need more of like the the music that's uplifting and making people feel good and like the vibration is good or like just making you feel something instead of just like oh that's oh that's nice oh I like the beat that's nice too it's a place for everything but I think that you know right now at the 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 the, the, the essence of the world is definitely in need of like the art that taps into like your humanity because all this other stuff is, is just too crazy oh yeah <laughs> where can we find then your music online and uh follow what's going on in the world of uh reyna williams um what's your website and your socials oh yeah my website is uh reyna williams.com pretty simple r-e-i-n-a williams.com and my socials are reyna williams music i try to keep it pretty easy to find um yeah definitely can hit me up on any of those places i'm pretty active on instagram that's like my kind of instagram and then facebook and i try to do tiktok sometimes but tiktok is is, is a strange environment um it you know I've, i'm still trying to figure out how to crack the tiktok code but i think a lot of people that like my music they actually more on like instagram and facebook so, you know, but either right. way, uh, you could, you know, if you want to send me a message on TikTok, I will find it or follow me there. Like there's, you know, I try to equally spread out the content through those things and you join my email list. Like as soon as you get to my website, there should be something popping up for the email list. And, um, you know, yeah, that's that's how you could follow me. And um, I'm just we I'm based out of Jersey. You know, we're playing in uh, let's say we're playing in. So actually, tomorrow night, I'm going to be sitting in with Wayne for a couple of songs in Morristown. Him and his band, Groove Gangsters, playing in Morristown at like the laundry or something like laundromat or something in the evening. Yeah, I think the laundromat. Laundromat, yeah. And then, uh, and then on Saturday, Mike and I are playing at Music Fest in the Bethlehem, PA, which is pretty dope. We're doing two sets um, over there by the steel mill stacks. And, um, and that's going to be 7 p.m. and... Um, I mean, I don't know when people are going to listen to it, but that's when we're going to be listening to this, but that's when we're doing um, <laughs> on the 10th, August 10th. And then um, October 1st, you know, Rain and Williams and the Remedies playing in the city at Ethel's, which is on the Upper East Side. And then, you know, we're just going to keep going from there because um, I, I, I'm really like excited about everything we're doing. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So uh, I want to thank you for your time today. Um, and uh, thank you for including me in the remedy. I'm having an amazing time working with you, an inspiring time too, which is really, uh, I, I couldn't wait for us to be able to get together and uh, have this discussion on uh, my new HD show because, uh, you know, I am as much a fan um, as anything when it comes to um, your music. So um, thank you so oh, much for being here man. today. Oh, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. It was cool.